You ever play a game and try to convince yourself that it's good? That what you're playing isn't a repetitive mess of poorly programmed artificial intelligence, linear level design, and good ideas that were taken out behind a barn and shot? Well, if you've ever experienced these things, you're probably playing Daikatana. But, there's also a small chance that you're playing Velvet Assassin. Velvet Assassin is a strange game to say the least, or rather a strange case more than anything. I'm not really sure where to begin criticizing it or praising it. Velvet Assassin is certainly a polarizing game. There have been people who think it's absolutely great, and people who think it's absolute dog shit. If you've never heard of this game, well, I don't blame you. Velvet Assassin saw a small release in 2009 for the PC and the Xbox 360. It was published by South Peak Games and developed by Replay Studios. I myself picked this obscure stealth game up at the ridiculously cheap price of 74 cents on Steam because I'd heard nothing but bad things about it, so I figured that it was right up my alley. And apparently you guys do too because some of you have asked me to review it or play it. And unfortunately, played it, I did. Velvet Assassin is a game about a woman named Violet Summer who was a British secret intelligence service officer during World War II. Now, you see, Violet Summer is based off a person who existed in real life called Violet Zabo, who was also a British spy during the war, but who was caught by the Nazis during her second mission and executed in a concentration camp. Velvet Assassin plays off this, with Violet Summer going on missions in attempts to aid the takedown of Nazi Germany. The actual plot of Velvet Assassin starts us off in a hospital, where Violet is bedridden due to injury. I was going to avoid talking about the plot so early, but it's honestly one of the biggest problems with the game, so let's have at it. In the game, you go and complete several missions, killing possibly hundreds of Nazis in your wake. All the missions take place in different locations and at different times in Violet's life. Which, if you take into consideration that at the beginning of the game we see Violet in a hospital, that doesn't make much sense. Until you realize that almost every mission in the game is nothing but a memory of Violet's. I mean, the game literally tells you this before the first mission starts. So, from a narrative perspective, this makes a lot of sense, right? Our memories as humans are often completely disjointed. We remember select things of select times in our lives, and there's often huge gaps in between these memories. So in terms of realism, the game certainly nails that down and gets points from me, but the story definitely suffers from this form of storytelling. Because we're playing random moments of Violet's life, I feel like we don't get to know her that well. Violet seems like an engaging character, but due to the sheer repetitiveness of the missions, and by the way, repetitiveness is also something that hurts the gameplay in this game, we never really get a sense of who Violet is. Yeah, Violet's a stone-cold killer, she's an assassin after all, but we never see her talking to other people. The only interaction she has with other human beings is... stabbing them. Repeatedly. Is Violet a good person, or is she a bad person? Well, I guess she is a good person since she is killing Nazis, but playing a game so heavily focused on one character who is either unlikable or uninteresting is quite the challenge. In cases like these, we often have to turn to the gameplay in order to have fun. The only problem? The gameplay fucking sucks! I just mentioned that the repetitiveness hurts the gameplay as much as it hurts the story, but before we get to that, let's get down to the basics. Velvet Assassin is a stealth game, and a terribly generic one at that. Not to mention how it often completely betrays its own nature. At the beginning of the game, you're taught how to sneak up on enemies, how to kill them, how to move their bodies so the other enemies don't notice anything out of the ordinary, and how to set traps, which includes whistling to lure enemies to your spot, electrocuting them while they stand in water puddles, and setting them on fire while they stand in puddles of oil. Now, really? Let's think this through. If I'm a fairly attractive British woman with a posterior so nice that the game may have well have just been called Velvet Ass, and I'm sneaking around a place full of Nazis, I don't think that setting someone on fucking fire would really help me stay hidden or not attract the attention of other Nazis who, if spot me, will kill me in seconds. 
I could shoot at the oil pools to set the enemy on fire. No. It's lapses in logic like this that make me question what the people making this game were thinking, and I think I have a pretty good idea. Velvet Assassin is an extremely linear game. There's often only one path to take, and you can almost never opt for non-violence and just sneak past random enemies because the path in the game to beat a certain level is completely predetermined. So, to try and add some variety to this otherwise shallow game, the designers probably came up with different ways to kill enemies, like electrocuting them or setting them on fire. This is also possibly the reason that there is a very basic experience system, which honestly, I couldn't have cared less about during my play of the game. The problem with all of this, however, is that even with some partial variety in the gameplay added, the repetitiveness of it all drags the game down significantly, especially when added to the linear gameplay. Velvet Assassin's gameplay could be easily summarized in four words. Run, hide, kill, repeat. Run, hide, kill, repeat. Run, hide, kill, repeat. Run, hide, kill, repeat. You don't do much of anything else in the game but that. Uh, oh wait, you do. In the final mission when the entire game turns into a third person shooter. Like I mentioned, the game betrays its own nature various times and this is the most blatant occurrence of that. The last mission is just gunning down Nazis with shitty aiming controls and the worst fucking hit detection I've seen in the last six months or so. Another great example of how the game betrays itself is in the morphine mode. Every now and again, Violet will find morphine and when she uses it, roses start falling from the floor, her clothes evaporate, and you enter bullet time. You use morphine in the game to kill enemies that you may have accidentally alerted or the ones that you just don't feel like chasing around a map. Nothing says immersion breaking like being in reality one second, then being in a Victoria's Secret fantasy the next. That's what morphine mode is. It's a fantasy within the plot that actually makes sense. My problem is that it breaks the immersion that this atmosphere creates, which in all fairness is pretty good. And there are good things to be said about this game, but we're not even close to being done with the bad. See, Velvet Assassin is also fucked up technically. Like I already said, the AI is stupid. In the game, when you step into the shadows, you're automatically hidden from enemy eyes. As stupid as this sounds and looks, stay with me. At many points in the game, I found myself stepping out of the shadows and into enemy view, and they didn't seem to give a damn about me just standing there. Perhaps they're too enamored with Violet's other features, or maybe they're just incompetently programmed. Speaking of incompetently programmed, Velvet Assassin has to have the fucking longest loading screens I've seen since Sonic 06. In fact, Sonic 06's loading screens on average last 30 seconds, and Velvet Assassin's last sometimes nearly three times that. I also feel compelled to bring up the fact that Velvet Assassin has fucking motion blur. 
Now, I don't want to spark an argument on whether or not motion blur belongs in gaming, but it certainly does not belong in this game. There's enough goddamn handicaps in this game without having to worry about not seeing shit every time you move. And you want to know the best part about this? There's no way to turn it off in game. That's right, the game has motion blur and you can't turn it off. Unless you go into the install directory and change the name of directional underscore blur dot pfx to literally anything else. Perhaps fuck underscore you dot pfx. Besides all these technical problems, the notion that in the game you're hidden by the shadows, as I previously mentioned, isn't inherently stupid, but Velvet Assassin takes this to hilariously bad levels. There's also the issue of killing someone that was part of a group and dragging their body away. Although this may not be an issue with the AI itself, it's still very dumb to think that a soldier in the game would just forget or not wonder what happened to his comrade whom he'd just spoken to minutes ago. This is probably more of a gameplay issue than anything, and there's still a lot I haven't touched on. The inability to kill enemies from the front with a knife is aggravating to say the least. Violet has this over-the-shoulder aiming mode which is used to stab enemies, but it's not worth jack shit and will often fail you. The aiming is terrible, the hit detection is worse, and if you're caught without ammo in your guns, that's death because they've got automatic weapons and you've got a toothpick. You can't even pick up the weapons that the enemies drop after they die. And when you die, you often have to start very far away due to Velvet Assassin's insufferable checkpoint system. By the way, I'm nearly convinced that the Nazis' weapons in this game are from the future because they have auto-aim and they rarely miss. But here I am, playing a game of Nazi dunk tank trying to desperately hit the target so they go down. The more you play the game, the more you realize just how shallow it is. You're playing a game with a nothing protagonist against nothing and stupid enemies with a nothing experience system and repetitiveness out the velvet ass. Now, there are good things about this game that may seem hard to believe because of how I'm painting the gameplay and all, but they do exist. The voice acting for one is pretty solid. I spent many nights lying in wait until dawn, staring at the walls for an eternity. They stared back and crept closer. I no longer feel any pain, only warm, flowing blood. It all seems like a dream. Is the war over? Nothing ever sounded like it was recorded in a slaughterhouse bathroom, but I wish there'd been more segments with characters speaking, since they don't happen too often. Velvet Assassin is also a pretty nice looking game. Aside from its graphics being good, the environments are also nicely modeled and lit, and that creates a good atmosphere, if nothing else. In closing, Velvet Assassin was a game that had a lot of potential and ideas that were clearly there, just horribly executed. Sure, the game looks and sounds good, but it plays with the versatility of a potato. To say that the game is frustrating is an understatement. It's not only frustrating, but it's not fun. And on top of even that, there's no fucking variation. Unless you want to consider variation the way that Violet kills people which you have no control over. My favorite one is when she stabs them in the balls. <sighs> Was für eine... I'd sure love to stab this game in the balls, but since it has none, it'll have to settle with the final rating of... Bullshit. <laughs>